Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, it's no surprise that most, if not all 2020 conventions, were cancelled for everyone's safety, including TF Nations, which, while unfortunate, was undoubtedly the wisest option. But to paraphrase their website, not even a global pandemic was going to stop them. And on the 17th of May, TFN announced a big broadcast of 2020, an online convention that was streamed through Twitch on the evening of the 14th and throughout the 15th of August. I watched most of it live and, I gotta say, it was a lot of fun. The quizzes, interviews, skits and so forth. To say they put a lot of effort into it is kind of an understatement. TFN's sheer dedication to providing something for Transformers fans worldwide to enjoy, including those who don't or can't afford to come to the usual in-person conventions, is nothing short of admirable. In addition, Toyfu held an online sale, and the profits went to the school feeding charity Mary's Meals, and my congratulations to them for that. It was from Toyfu that I picked up the topic of today's video. Fun fact, there are actually two sideswipes within the aligned continuity. You're probably more familiar with the arrogant, impetuous young bot from the 2015 Robots in Disguise cartoon. However, another sideswipe showed up long before him, in both the War of and Fall of Cybertron video games, and it wasn't until the latter in which he got a toy. Fall of Cybertron Sideswipe is a redeco and extensive remold of Fall of Cybertron Jazz. Hell, where the alt mode's concerned, pretty much the entire chassis is new. It's a sleek Cybertronian car which, for the most part, successfully captures Sideswipe's look from the games. The front bumper is accurate, as are the tail fins, sounds the missing spoiler between them. And in a reversal of the much more recent Siege Sideswipe, the fall of Cybertron design has side windows, but no windscreen. The colour scheme is also pretty spot on, primarily red, in keeping with most G1-influenced Sideswipes, with black, dark grey and white as accent colours. He bears the giant twin stripes from the hood, all the way to the rear, why they change from silver to white past the hood, barring those two segments, beats me. And what aligned continuity game figure would be complete without painted energy lines? On the rims no less, though strangely, they're done in a duller red as opposed to the pink-like hue that better conveys flowing energy due to its vibrancy. Still, the deco easily surpasses the American release of Jazz. Sadly, for all the impressive retooling, it doesn't fix the problems Jazz had in his alt mode. There's still no rear bumper, and the fists are all but exposed. As, I guess, a consolation prize, Sideswipe comes with a different weapon from Jazz, unless it's the Japanese version, in which case he gets both. And a metallic finish. And completely silver stripes. And brighter energy lines. Lucky bass. The Battle Cannon is based on the Path Blaster from the Fall of Cybertron game. Aside from being well painted and detailed, the barrel extends and the turbine rotates on a ratchet. They could have easily made this weapon a solid lump of plastic, but it actually has some functionality, so that's pretty cool. With the hook, it can clip on the back, and using only the side post, it can plug onto the roof or either side of the rear. Due to its placement, the longer post can only be handheld. And yeah, about the robot mode. Here's where being a retool of Jazz bites this figure in the skid plate multiple times. Since the two Autobots have very different character models, Sideswipe's robot mode is one of the least faithful to the games. Amongst other details, the wheels on his forearm should be on his shoulders, the chest doesn't stick out nearly as much, it's also missing some stripes, he lacks those collar bars, and he doesn't have wheels built into his feet. Though I guess they make for a nice, unintentional nod to the live-action movie Sideswipe. Thankfully, he sports the correct head at least, which would look decent if not for A, his sunken cheekbones, he's a young bot, working them in makes him look quite the opposite, and B, those soulless eyes.
All this actually ties into my biggest problem with this mode. It's just ugly, and not befittingly so. Sideswipe's chest is humongous. From what I've seen, it's one of the few things he does worse than Jazz, while his limbs are weedy. The legs in particular come off as too narrow. It's like they tried blending the thin speedster and young tough warrior body types, resulting in this misproportioned mess. And while hollowness doesn't bother me quite as much as others, the transformation results in a pretty egregious gap within the chest. FOC Sideswipe's articulation is adequate. The head, shoulders, wrists, and hips are ball jointed. The arms also splay out on a hinge so tight you have to hold this grey shoulder piece to do it. The upper arms swivel all the way around, the thighs barely swivel at all, while the elbows, knees, and ankles are ratcheted. The ankles move back and forth, though they don't tilt. He's fairly poseable, but I've seen better, even in Fall of Cybertron with Ultra Magnus. But hey, he still has that colossal cannon, and thank Primus too, cause with it, Sideswipe is just about the most formidable warrior on the whole of Sight. Oh, you know what's coming. Thankfully, he's jointed as such that he can just about hold the cannon via both pegs at once. In what is actually a fairly strong subline of generations, Fall of Cybertron's sideswipe drops the ball by a wide margin. While his alt mode is a pretty sweet ride, and the cannon is impressive, almost everything about the robot ranges from boring to downright frustrating. And while game inaccuracy is not exactly exclusive to this figure, Magnus's robot mode at least had the audacity to be good on its own. What few positives Sideswipe's robot mode has are sadly not enough to bring the overall toy out of tin territory. But look on the bright side, for this subline, it's only up from here. No,